Hi, I guess uh, it's time to start. And as I know you guys just have lunch and uh, you would rather take a nap and not listen to me rambling about the um, IPSec. Um, but I'll try to be as entertaining as possible. <laughs> Um, all right, um, so my name is Mike Bilapuhov. I'm the uh, developer with the OpenBSD project, and I'm working for uh, Vantronic Secure Systems that uh, produces uh, networking appliances based on OpenBSD. And uh, yeah, as this uh, uh, Soviet Times Polish poster says, what have you done to fulfill the plan? and uh, why you should be listening to me. Uh, well, I have implemented uh, most of the stuff I'll be uh, covering in this talk. Um, and I guess uh, it would be the right time to ask me questions, if you have any. But um, the things that I'll be talking about were implemented uh, on the course of multiple releases and over a couple of years, and some uh, details might be uh, already forgotten, so I uh, ask you to please excuse me. Um, right, so let's get started. Um, first of all, I want to talk about the uh, new uh, ISNI instruction set that was implemented in Intel Westmere, a new uh, uh, course. Um, in fact, it's a two instruction set, that will, the instruction set, instruction set extensions that we'll be talking about, uh, ISNI and CLMAL. Um, and something with the output, right? Anyways, um, the um, Intel introduced uh, a bunch of new uh, SSE instructions. Um, SSE is a, a, an FPU, a part of FPU, not the CPU. Um, and the instructions they introduced were um, IS encrypt, IS decrypt, IS encrypt last, IS decrypt last for the final round of IS encryption, and uh, two instructions that facilitate uh, the IS key expansion procedure, IS key, key gen assist and IS IMC. Uh, these instructions operate on uh, XMM registers. Um, Uh, which is, um, yeah, and I forgot to mention the, the, the instruction to perform carryless multiplication, PC, uh, PCL mal QDQ. Um, <laughs> carryless multiplication is, 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 is uh, so what this instruction does, it, it takes two XMM registers, uh, field, uh, XMM registers, if you don't remember, are 128 bit uh, registers, but it uses only 64 bits of data and it performs multiplication of 64 bit uh, uh, basically vectors. It's a vector multiplication. Uh, producing a 127 bit uh, result. So uh, as I mentioned, these are the SSE instructions and um, but we wanted to use them in the kernel to be able to implement the um, the um, acceleration of the um, uh, uh, IS algorithms used in the IPsec processing. So normally, a uh, uh, floating point uh, uh, arithmetics are not used in the kernel. And there's a very good reason for that. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, CPU, and FPU have different uh, contexts. That means that when task switches away from a CPU, it doesn't necessarily mean that it switches away its FPU context. So FPU context can be preserved, right, between uh, task switches. And that means that the whoever calls the uh, SSC instruction needs to first to prepare a new FPU context and save the old one so that it can uh, possibly restore it afterwards. So um, this, is, this, this, this uh, mechanism uh, was reasonably new for our kernel. 
Um, and for, for that purpose, we have implemented the lock-in interface, FPU kernel enter and FPU kernel exit, which denotes a, uh, which, which, uh, denotes a, a critical section where uh, a thread uh, that has taken this basically lock uh, cannot be um, involuntarily uh, switched away um, and has to and also uh, must clear the existing context and prepare a new one so that it can uh, proceed with the with those uh, SSC instructions. Um, another caveat uh, in that it cannot be safely used in the interrupt context. Um, the thing is that um, switching FP or saving uh, FPU context. Uh, might require you to send an IPI and wait for the result uh, to synchronize it with uh, other uh, CPUs. And if you were wondering if the uh, IS instruction set is unique to Intel and AMD uh, bulldozer uh, CPUs, uh, no, it's not. The newest uh, Oracle Spark T4 CPU, which is uh, a continuation of the UltraSpark T line uh, also has also features an an, an IS uh, instruction set, although it's not compatible with ISNI. Uh, and it was also announced that ARM v8 architecture and Power 7 uh, Plus architecture would also feature the IS uh, instructions. Now let's take a look um, at the new. Um, Encryption uh, mode for IS Cipher that was uh, recently um, developed and standardized um, by different com com committees. And this is a combined authentication encryption transformation, which means that uh, while processing the data, the, uh, um, the uh, authentication tag is calculated at the same time as the encryption happens. Um, the message authentication code, as I denoted it here, although it's not exactly correct, but that's what most of the people are used to, because in IS, uh, IS, uh, GCM, this, uh, this, this piece um, is not called message authentication code, it's, it's called authentication tag. But uh, it's basically like, a, a, we can consider it to be like a synonym for the for this talk, just so that we don't get confused. So, uh, what kind of MAC it generates? It generates 128-bit MAC, not truncated. That means that there was actually uh, a couple of um, uh, variations of this ISGCM standard specified that differ by the uh, by the length of the tag, and 128-bit means. 16 bytes, so the, the algorithm is called, in fact, ISGCM 16. And they have specified also ISGCM, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 12 and 14, which basically just takes this MAC and truncates it. That's a normal pr practice, uh, like uh, HMAC hashes were also truncated um, in the IPsec. But um, uh, in OpenBSD, we are using a non-truncated version. Um, because most of the um, most of the requirement documents they actually specify only the full version. They never nobody really uh, cares about the, the truncated ones. Also, it's possible to uh, use an authentication only version where you just don't uh, 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 encrypt the, the the plain text. You don't generate the cipher text, and in in this case, the algorithm is called ISGMAC. And essentially, this algorithm is just a, um, a combination of IS used in the counter mode and a special uh, GMAC hashing function that I will be talking about uh, later. So where is it used? Um, it used it in the new uh, MAC security standard for layer two encryption in Ethernet networks in fiber channel security protocols to encrypt fiber channel. 
uh, in IPsec, it's also specified for SSH and TLS, but uh, I'm not sure about OpenSSL and TLS, but we don't implement it in SSH yet. Um, NSA suite B, which is a which is a suite that um, uh, the crypto a suite of cryptographic um, algorithm that um, um, it's it's in fact like a, like a uh, do document published by NSA that uh, describes uh, which algorithms should use for which purpose and NSA suite B endorses it endorses GCM as a preferred mode of IS. In fact. Uh, the older version of the presentation said uh, as a preferred mode of IS for network encryption, but I went and looked it up again, and I haven't found any other modes that they actually endorse. So they say IS should be only used in GCM mode. Um, it's also optional in the USG v6 specification, which is a United States government v6 compliance specification, uh, which is uh, a list of requirements for U.S. government contractors. Um, it was released. Uh, uh, it, it was. It, it's, uh, it was released like a couple of years ago, and uh, the, the basic purpose of it is to be is to to uh, make a set of rules for new contractors selling IPv6 enabled equipment for the United States government. So, everyone who sells this equipment, they have to comply. And uh, right now or like a couple of months ago, the GCM cipher was optional, but it can be perfectly promoted to, to, to a must. And it's also a new standard. Well, it all started with a new standard, in fact. So let's just uh, take, a, uh, I made a, uh, made a few slides to just uh, um, briefly talk about how ISGCM operates and why is it different from the other modes. And um, here we uh, define our input to the cipher and outputs, or to the mode. Um, so a secret key for IS, obviously, of 128, 192, or 256 bits long, an initialization vector, in fact, in the GCM, uh, the initialization vector is called nonce, the same way it's called in the ISCTR, uh, a plain text of up to 64 gigabytes and an optional additional authenticated data. This data is provided to the cipher and will only be authenticated but not encrypted. Um, that's another, uh, uh, another thing why this uh, mode is, is re, uh, a little bit special. The outputs of the of the mode is a cipher text of the same length as plain text because ISGCM uses ISCTR. The counter mode turns a block cipher into a stream cipher, so the length of the cipher text is the same, and the authentication tag is 128 bit, bits long. So uh, this is the um, the high level view on the on how. Uh, which data is getting processed by the by the mode? Um, here in, on the in the top, we have um, a uh, let me draw it a bit. I'm talking about this part here, right? So this is this is basically a a structure that resembles, for example, an, an ESP packet. Uh, it has a header, for example, it has a, um, um, uh, an NSPI, the security parameter index, and, uh, for example, it, an, an ESP has a, um, an initialization vector, and, and the data, obviously. So the way, this, uh, the way Cypher works is that we take uh, initialization vector, we take header, we take keys, actually they're not depicted on the picture, and we supply it to the uh, GCM encryption engine along with plain text and output will be uh, a cipher text, the encrypted data, the ICV which is, which is an authentication tag, and uh, the Header and uh, like the the sequence uh, number uh, are copied uh, untouched, un unencrypted, but 
they are also authenticated because they are supplied as a, as 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 authentication data. So that's 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 the crucial difference here because in uh, ISCBC uh, with HMAC mode, the SPI of the ESP packet is not authenticated. GCM fixes this by um, providing a notion of additional authenticated data. Now let's uh, take a look at the how uh, uh, a, a bit more low-level uh, picture uh, depicting how the GCM mode works. Frankly, uh, I was trying to find um, a simple picture, and this is the, the simplest I, could, uh, I, I have found. And I have tweaked it to be even more simpler. So this is, this might not be 100% correct, because it, it also requires a bit of an explanation. Uh, so the, the, way, uh, the way to look at this picture is that this part here, on the right, this is essentially an ice counter mode. We take the IV, uh, we increment the counter, we encrypt it with our uh, uh, generated keys. Because in counter mode, you encrypt the counter block. You don't encrypt the, the plain text itself. You encrypt the counter block. Uh, and that gets you what they call key stream, and then you uh, XOR it with the plain text, and that's how you get cipher text in, uh, in ISCTR. So this part just denotes uh, ISCTR. So let's take a look at, at what happens uh, on the left. Uh, the the first thing that happens is that when IV is taken and a counter uh, value is appended to it and it gets encrypted, you get the first block, which is basically a, which, which is used specially in this mode. What happens to it is that it's fed to the, um, it, it's saved. And then it would be fed to the G hash here. Now, this is just saved for now, right? We, we, we just uh, we store it in the context, and we don't do anything with it. And, and we start encrypting with, uh, with counter value 1. We start encrypting plain text. Now, when we are, when uh, the, the GCM works on, on blocks of data, 128-bit blocks. So uh, as long as you have that amount mm, of, of plain text to process, you run the you run the uh, ISCTR algorithm, but on every uh, on, the, on the every block, you also send by this. You can see this feedback kind of arrow. You send it to G hash, and you hash it. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention. First, uh, uh, after we we have done with uh, IV and generating this block, we feed uh, additional authentication data to G hash. And it stays in the con in the hash context there. Uh, and now, oops. And now, when we feed uh, our blocks of uh, cipher text to G hash, we pro we basically uh, every time we hash a block, we save it in the context. And in the end, when we are done processing plain text, what we do is that we XOR our initial counter block, in fact, it's called this way, with the G hash value that we, we, we had. And this is how we get the authentication tag. Pretty simple. Uh, let's talk about implementations that we did uh, in OpenBSD. There are, in fact, two implementations, the portable written in C, so that we can uh, get a feel of the cipher, we can uh, do the test vectors and stuff. We can understand if we got the, the algorithm correctly. And the second implementation is the implementation uh, written in uh, SOC assembly uh, and the C glue code uh, that makes use of the ISNI and, ISNI and CLML instruction extensions. Um, 
the portable in, uh, implementation uh, is 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 divided in several parts. In fact, uh, there are uh, three parts. One is not uh, described on this slide, which is ISCTR. We just used the ISCTR that we had previously implemented in our cryptographic framework. And the two remaining components is the the G hash and uh, roped into the uh, more high level API so that we can divide it into different stages like init, set, key, reinit, update, final, which is called ISGMAC and implemented in Cscript or GMAC CNH. And it's a straightforward implementation. It uses 32 bit uh, integers and it does uh, XORs in, in C, it's all in C. And it's very slow because the um, multiplication in the finite field that is uh, one of the core uh, techniques in the uh, in the G hash is has to be done bit by bit. You multiply vectors bit by bit, and these bit accesses and doing this in the runtime kills performance a big time. So there exi uh, there's exists a method to improve performance by a uh, large amount by, by, by a large amount by implementing the uh, tables of pre-computed coefficients. So it means in the initial phase when you set up your uh, your uh, cipher context, you pre-compute the whole table of coefficients and then you just look look them up and and use in the in in a source. Um, this is not implemented yet, but something that uh, is reasonably needed because, uh, well, for obvious reasons, we, we don't have it on any other architecture other, other than, uh, in fact, MD64. Excuse me. The other uh, part of the, uh, of the mode that needs, needed to be implemented is, the, uh, is an actual um, uh, function doing uh, the GCM processing in the cryptographic framework, and I will we'll be talking uh, a bit about framework itself in a few uh, few minutes. But um, I just must say that the cryptographic framework works, works with uh, naturally with MBUFs or uh, uh, IOVEC type, type structures, and um, basically what we need in cryptographic framework is a function that traverses the chain and calls the right functions at the right uh, moment, in the right order. So this is what uh, software crypto combined routine is doing. And unfortunately, there is also a, a simplification I implemented because the, 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 uh, the whole thing is rather complicated and I didn't want to complicate it uh, even more from, from the start. And I just use mcopy data and mcopy back uh, the mbuff uh, data handling routines instead of traversing them buff uh, queues and doing basically a, well, it's not exactly a zero copy because you still have to load XMM registers, but it's close to that. Right now I'm uh, doing uh, an, uh, an unneeded uh, uh, copying, but that can be optimized. Um, let's take a look at the assembly. Assembly was written, in fact, by Intel and uh, it was released we actually requested them to uh, uh, release it under uh, BSD license, and they, they did. And thanks for them, because that uh, saved uh, a lot of trouble for us. And this uh, file, sysarc md64 md64 s intel uh, dot s, um, only exists for md64 because of the um, because it hasn't been ported to 32-bit architecture, in fact. It requires different function calling convention and uh, whole other things that we didn't do. So uh, if someone can pick up this task, that would be a, a, great, uh, a great thing. And I know that FreeBSD have taken this, uh, and uh, taken this file and split it into uh, uh, more usable uh, parts and adding more uh, C code um, to simplify it, but this hasn't been, I haven't looked uh, very closely and I'm not sure how uh, 
like they, I, I know that they still have a, a, a lot of uh, uh, assembly code for for key generation. They I think they didn't for that, but um, that's something to 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 look for certainly. Uh, unfortunately, I think they don't implement G, G, G Mac interface, and G Mac requires additional XMM registers, and I386 has only eight of XMM registers. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, and MD64 uses uh, 16, so that's that's also a difference that needs to be um, overcome. This file implements uh, a bunch of functions. I said key to, to uh, do the key expansion, to generate the key. Why is it important to have uh, IS, uh, uh, key, generate, key, key expansion written in a C assembly? Well, it doesn't matter for, uh, for an IPsec tunnel that, in, uh, that uh, creates connection once, uh, 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 like, uh, uh, once a month and then it stays and it runs for a month and like does nothing. But what if you have a VPN gateway that serves hundreds or thousands connections daily? Key expansion is extremely, extremely uh, uh, slow procedure. In fact, OpenBSD uses the Blowfish, Blowfish uh, key expansion code for uh, password uh, encryption. Because it's it's very very uh, complicated. It's it's uh, it takes a lot of resources to compute. Um, right, ISN encrypt decrypt. That's uh, that's clear. It implements basically a, a round uh, of IS. ISN ECB is not used because ECB is not used in IPsec or anywhere else. In fact, and shouldn't be used. Uh, CBC, which is used in IPsec. Uh, CTR, same thing, and uh, two functions that uh, I have mostly implemented myself, although I took some of the um, Intel code from the white paper that implemented the, the, um, um, the um, it's called reduction steps in the, in the uh, Galois hash function. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to tell that uh, GCM stands for Galois counter mode. Galois was a, 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 a mathematician that started the finite field theory. Uh, so the Cypress called just after him. That's an interesting fact. Okay, so uh, how does this IS, IS, uh, uh, how does this assemb assembly uh, ropes up into a, um, a, a driver for the cryptographic um, framework? Well, there is a C file that actually implements this whole interface, and it's it's essentially a rope around assemb assembly, and currently it supports accelerated uh, ISCBC, ISCTR, ISGCM16 since OpenBSD 4.9, and then I slacked a bit on committing this GCM stuff, and GCM stuff was committed only in 5.1, and uh, because of the way IPsec, uh, because of the way um, um, Cryptographic uh, uh, framework operates uh, in case you just in case you are using ISCBC with HMAX SHA one that HMAX SHA one cannot be accelerated by this driver at least right now. Uh, so in in case you are using this uh, transformation and you still want to use ISCBC from ISNI. Uh, you need to basically call software crypto for all your HMAC routines, which is which what the driver does as well. So the future projects in this area is to clean up assembly, uh, maybe make it faster. They in fact, uh, because um, IS is, is is specified in in uh, uh, as a big Indian cipher as most of the other cryptographic algorithms. There's lots of um, um, well, in fact, not in the IS code. Uh, in the uh, GCM code, there's lots of uh, uh, Indian conversions going on. And maybe some of them can be lost. Port to I386, well, I've talked a bit about it. Don't want to stop on this. Um, implement IS6TS. Uh, it's not hard to implement IS6TS. And the only reason why it wasn't done is because we, we don't have consumers for this. The only possible consumer is a soft rate crypto rate, crypto mode, but 
I will be talking about it a bit later, but I just want to mention that it's not possible right now for crypt, crypt, uh, uh, for software it would be to just use the IS6TS provided by SNI driver. Because in fact, well, I can mention this right now because time is running out. Uh, soft rate does not go um, through the crypto thread. It calls crypto framework uh, invoke method that I will be talking about a bit later uh, directly. And what, it, what happens is that it loses process context and you can't use ISNI, not in the process, in the interrupt context. Um, evaluate AVX. AVX is an advanced vector, vector extensions, a new SSE uh, instruction extension uh, um, set released by Intel in the new uh, CPUs, I think Sandy Breach and up. Uh, basically, AVX is a very interesting thing. It uh, extends XMM registers to 256-bit YMM registers. Also, it adds and updates most of the um, SSC instructions dealing with floating point mass to operate on 256-bit registers. But also, it adds a, a set of commands. Basically, it duplicates every, almost every single SSC instruction with the inst same instruction, but with a V prefix that takes uh, one argument more to save the result of the operation. This is a crucial thing for uh, people um, uh, doing uh, uh, like uh, automatic vectorization in compilers that they have basically a side, uh, side effect free instructions. And Maybe it's possible to gain something for ISNI with, from IVX. I'm not sure. IVX should be uh, IVX requires additional support from the operating system that is also lacking in OpenBSD. So if somebody can step up and write the code. Okay, let's talk just a bit about cryptographic framework, uh, just so that we will understand what's the uh, what's the thing behind this whole. Um, so it was implemented by, it was designed and mostly implemented by Angelus Keramitis for OpenBZ27, that's 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, the main purpose of the framework is to provide consumers, which are kernel services like IPsec, to uh, provide, for the, uh, provide uh, access to the uh, hardware crypto accelerators. So it just, it's just a framework that allows you to uh, write unified drivers for cryptographic accelerators uh, and um, uh, 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 an IPsec stack and other uh, consumers within the kernel to have a unified interface to access them. So it implements two devices, oh, two, I'm sorry. Uh, um, the implementation uh, includes the, the kernel API, which is described by Crypto9 man page, and the um, uh, and the um, user land interface that is done through a, device, a character device, uh, Dev Crypto, that is described in the Crypto Format page. The framework operates on M buffs that are coming from the network stack and uh, CUIOs, which is, a, is basically a sort of an extension on top of the UIOs, which is a kernel uh, a version of the IOVEX. Pro, uh, copied from the uh, 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 field with the information provided by the um, user land. Every write that, upper, uh, that user land programs uh, make translates into uh, UIOs. The data is translated to UIOs. Whether or not it was, uh, write was issued with a IOVEC or just a, uh, supplying a plain buffer. Kernel always translates into a UIOs. Um, example drivers encrypt, uh, include software crypto, uh, VRX script set of instructions uh, that implement uh, ISCBC mode in one instruction, and ISNI and PCI crypto accelerators like UBSEC, which is a Blue Steel or uh, later bought by Broadcom. Uh, crypto accelerator and uh, Hufen, for example, uh, by a small company. Um, let's take a look at the kernel uh, API quickly. Or well, two 
to register uh, the, the, the cryptographic accelerator within the framework, the driver for the cryptographic accelerator has to call the crypto register function, providing three pointers, new session, free session, process. New session and free session uh, deal with the context creation and context destruction, and process does actual processing of the MBA for CUIOS chains. Consumer is the, the code that actually wants to get uh, a hand on the cryptographic services. Um, starts with a new session, then get, uh, calls get react to get a, a, a cryptographic descriptor or number of descriptors. For example, for uh, ISCBC plus HMAC SHA-1, you would need two descriptors, one for encryption, one for uh, HMAC. Um, dispatch, when, when uh, consumer is ready with the filling the uh, crypto descriptors with information, it calls dispatch to um, send those requests to the cryptographic framework. And uh, Kansama has to supply a callback point, a callback function to the dispatch routine that will be called when uh, during the completion phase, when cryptographic, uh, when when the uh, cryptographic transformation has happened, you might need to do further processing, like in IPsec stack, for example. Uh, and this is this is. Um, where you supply the pointer for a callback. Uh, free rec when you're done with the uh, descriptors and free session when you're done with a session. Now let's take a look how uh, crypto dispatch works. Crypto dispatch, in fact, uh, doesn't do, doesn't call process routine by itself. Instead, it um, cr creates a work queue task um, for a crypto threat to, to, to uh, um, to deal with. Um, so basically, the only thing that Crypto Dispatch does is just work QQ task. Um, when, uh, crypto, when crypto threat is being woken up by the um, um, work Q subsystem, it calls crypto invoke function, which uh, Which the, the only uh, purpose of it is to call the uh, is to find if, if look up the the, the hardware uh, the driver and call its process routine. An actual work happens in the in the driver uh, processing the re request. And here on this picture, you can see I, I specifically added this comment here to denote that um, here, in fact. The crypto done uh, function might not be called directly, but what happens in the PCI cryptographic accelerator is that you create, uh, you feel you feel um, uh, a ring with with uh, uh, the, you you feel the DMA ring with the um, with the packets you want to process, and. Uh, you signal the car to start the uh, to start doing so, and and you exit. Then the interrupt happens, and the interrupt uh, uh, handler does the queue procession, uh, queue completion, and the final uh, final s s uh, step in this uh, queue completion routine is to call is to hand back the crypto descriptor back to the cryptographic framework by calling crypto done. Crypto done will not call anything directly like the callback. It will enqueue a new task, the same crypto threads, once again, for it to call the callback. And the only thing that crypto threads will do is call the callback. So why is it done this way? Why are we, uh, why are we not calling these functions di directly? Well, there are several reasons for them. I try to be uh, fast. So the, the, the main reason is that this part is a network stack, and this part is a network stack. For example, in the ESP case, that's the top one is the ESP input, and the bottom one is ESP input callback. So these parts, they run as part of the uh, IP software interrupt, which has an IP level IPL softnet. The cryptographic accelerator runs at IPL net, 
which is higher than that. So uh, the problem is that in the interrupt context, or in fact anywhere else, you can't lower your SPL level unless you know the previous one. And in, because of this function uh, chain, you actually, at, point, at the point when crypto done is invoked, you don't know which SPL level was there. And in case of interrupt, it's not even possible to, to, to do it correctly. So that's why we have to uh, basically jump through the hops and call it this way. Now, um, just a brief uh, slide about the old PCI and PCI-X script accelerators. In fact, the latest broad conversion, which is PCI Express, and in, in essence is a PCI-X device with a PCI-X to PCI Express bridge. So it's still a PCI-X device. So it was a great idea back in the 90s when they decided to offload crypto to a PCI device. Although even back then, they understood that having lots of small, uh, having lots of bus transactions doing crypto for Tiny packets is also not very, uh, not very, uh, doesn't bring much of the performance improvement. Uh, these devices are usually, usually uh, capable of doing symmetrical crypto, like DEST, 3 dest or IS in some particular mode, like ISCBC, and you can't make this device do ISCT unless it supports it. They also can perform in the same a round of uh, DMA processing and HMAC operation, usually it's MD5 or SHA-1. It, they have usually a, a random number generator, I didn't mention it, and a public key engine that the only uh, purpose we have found for it in OpenBSD is to use, use it as a uh, modular uh, to perform modular exponentiation. It's a uh, procedure that is used for uh, in RSA. So unless you, and yeah, okay. And uh, recently we have figured out that in fact these script accelerators and the way we, um, that, that the whole work that was done to, to, to support them is actually not, not exactly rewarding because now most of this hardware is not 64-bit DMA capable. So you need to either implement bounce buffers or you need to implement, uh, you need to take uh, buffers from the lower memory, or uh, you need to run it in the system with IOMMU and things like that. And we have just uh, <laughs> figured this out in time for enabling the big mem on MD64, which is a, a possibility of, uh, for the kernel to access uh, memory above four gigabytes. And also, these drivers contain some extra logic to perform uh, to, 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 to handle, uh, for example, the initialization vectors and other parameters that can be wrong. Recently, when those allegations, IPsec allegations, you might have heard of it, started, uh, we started looking into that and we found that uh, um, the initialization vector processing in these drivers was in fact wrong. What was happening is that drivers implemented the old uh, way of uh, not reinitializing initialization vector for every packet, but doing that only for the first one, and for the later packets, taking the last uh, bytes of the previously encrypted packets. Apparently, the old specification for CBC stated, well, like for IPsec, I'm not sure, stated uh, this way of processing, but all the newer specifications say, well, if you do that, and you can control input, and you can look at the output, you can correlate the, the uh, the ciphertext that you produce with the plain with the plain text that generated, and you can re get close to recovering the key. Uh, and the only reason why would you use uh, them right now is for heavy module exponentiation. It's still very expensive in software, and it uses large uh, 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 chunks of data, so it's still relevant. If you run, for example, SSL. Uh, Okay, I'm running out of time, right? Just want to mention what do, what do we want to do in the uh, future with OCF. Uh, oh, unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to talk about the extended sequence numbers, but 
uh, I have added support to the cryptography framework and to the uh, IKD, the IKV2 daemon, and we want to add support to other uh, drivers, including the IS, ISNI. We want to use multiple work keys instead of crypto thread to, to uh, um, make it perform better on SMP machines. We, we, need, we want to rethink locking, and we want to improve GMAC performance, the C version, and we want to convert software to use uh, work queue. Okay. Unfortunately, I ran out of time, so uh, what's the plan? The questions or, or no time for questions? Nobody knows. So we can do some questions. Do, does anyone have any questions? Please speak up. Uh, wait a minute, I will pass the mic. All that ASM code was for uh, from Intel. Does it work on AMD CPUs? That which, from what I know, also include those instructions. You mean the? Yeah, I, I didn't try. I haven't seen those CPUs yet. I mean, I nearly forgot that AMD exists. In the... <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it should. It should. They implement the same set of instructions. Any other questions? <coughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you.